Okay, let's um, just pray and we'll get started, right? Okay. Yeah, just so why don't we just spend some time just praying in the spirit, praying in tongues. And um, I just want to encourage us to pray out what the Lord's, Lord puts in our heart, you know, what the Holy Spirit, what He puts in our heart to pray. Okay, so it could be it could be for yourself, it could be for someone else, um, it could be for anything, you know, maybe for the nation, uh, whatever it is, the Holy Spirit um, prompts or leads us to pray, we'll pray that, right? So individually, you just pray, you pray in the Spirit, you pray in tongues um, loud enough so you can hear. So, and I just want to encourage the online class also to do that. You pray in the spirit and loud enough if you're able to, if you're in a private place setting, and um, if you can do that. Let's spend some time doing that. Oh, thank you, Father. Father God, we honor you this morning. We just invite you, Lord, in our midst, of oh, Father God, to have, Lord, uh, a preeminence, O oh, Master. We surrender our lives, Lord, into your mighty hands, O oh, God. Yes, Lord, spirit, soul, and body, Lord, we belong to you because you purchased us with your precious blood. Just continue to pray in the spirit. Yeah, just open your mouths, just pray in tongues, pray in the spirit. Right? Let's just stir up our, our spirit, engage with the spirit of God, um, put aside all weariness, tiredness, or even you know passivity in our mind, in our spirit. Just put it aside. Let's engage with the heart of God. Thank you, Lord, for the plans that you have for us are good plans, Lord, plans to prosper, not to harm, Lord, thoughts of peace and not of calamity. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, this morning we just pray for a, for a replacement uh, of fleshly thoughts, of selfish ambitions, Father God, with, with the heart of God, with the mind of Christ. Lord, we pray for, for a spiritual mind, O oh God, a mind that is focused on you. You ask for a heart, O oh Father God, that's Lord, that, mo that is moved to the things that you are moved for, God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name. God. We bless your name. Father, we pray that uh, this is our desire that you would take us further, deeper in you, Father God, further, deeper in your ways, O oh Master Lord. We just want to thank you for your grace, Lord, and your mercy. Lord, we thank you for the precious blood which you shed for us, Lord, on the cross, because of which, O oh God, you have made oh, this new and wonderful and perfect way for us, O oh Lord. Lord, you have given us access, Lord, to come to your presence, Lord, to receive grace and to receive mercy, Father God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that we can come right to the throne, God. Come, we can come to your presence, oh Father God. We thank you that there's nothing limiting, there's nothing hindering us, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We bless your name. We bless your name, Father God. We come at this time, we come at this day into your mighty hands, and we give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, okay, let's um, let's just pick up from where we uh, stopped last class. Last class, we were looking at uh, you know some of the divine principles, and the last last two last couple of divine principles, like principles. Where, whereby God, um, principles that are there in the Word of God, and if we would do them, that the Lord would, you know, prosper us. Right? And these are things that He has put in place. Um, right? So, um, we are, let me just share the screen. 
See, one of the privileges, greatest privileges for us is that we have uh, the indwelling presence of God, right? Um, many times we we don't realize it or we, I don't know, we, we don't really value it. But the fact is that, um, that the Holy Spirit, right? the Triune God, Holy Spirit, you know, He indwells us, right? And uh, just the awareness of that um, and the revelation of that, right? And the daily practice of leaning and listening and obeying what he has to tell us, what he has to lead us, will will really change our life, change our life for the better, right? Change our walk with God. It'll be even closer, like right? so. so this, one of the principles that we have in Scripture is to listen to the Holy Spirit. Okay. Listen to the Holy Spirit. See what are what are some of the characteristics of God, attributes of God, you know, when you say, okay, he's God, right? When you say he's God, he's triune God, he's God. What are some attributes? What are some characteristics, qualities, because of which we would say, okay, he's God? Sorry? Almighty. He's almighty God. He's all good. All good, all knowing, all powerful, all powerful, all benevolent. Yes, so all powerful, all mighty, which means that uh, you know, there's nothing or no one that is greater. Right? He is the very, uh, if you say he's the fullness, he's the, the limits. There's nothing beyond that, limitless God, rather. There's nothing beyond that, and uh, you know. I think in the Holy Spirit class last semester, we would have, you know, studied about three basic attributes. One is that he is omnipotent, which is that all powerful. Second one, he's omnipresent, right? Which means he is present everywhere uh, at the same time. Right? He can engage with all of us at the same time, speak to all of us at the same time on different things at the same time. So he's present everywhere. And the third quality that we saw is that that he is omniscient, okay, which means that he is all knowing, right? So there's nothing that he does not know. So he is infinite God, limitless, which means that he has infinite knowledge and understanding, right? He is limitless. You know, we've not we we, do, we don't know anybody like that, right? In our human uh, we, we, we could have come across people who are very knowledgeable, who are experts in the field, but their knowledge and understanding also has limits, right? They might be very knowledgeable, right? they might know a lot of things, but they also have limits. But when we consider God, we see that he is limitless in his knowledge, limitless in his understanding, right? So. We as believers, we have the privilege of listening to the Holy Spirit and receiving from the Holy Spirit this knowledge, a little bit of that, you know, and this understanding. Right? So that's a great privilege, right? To be led by Him, to be guided by Him, to be counseled by the Holy Spirit. So we might think, okay, on what matters can God really counsel me? Or on what matters can God lead me? or give me wisdom, right? So we, we norm, naturally we think spiritual matters, right? When we say spiritual matters, we're saying, okay, God, I, I need understanding of the word. I want to know you more, right? Give me revelation, give me understanding. And, the, and so, you know, as we read through scripture, we, we get that understanding, oh God, you are like this. God, you are, you are like this also. You get that understanding, revelation of knowledge of God. But we fail to understand that everything, everything there is to know, God knows. Right? You could be a scientist, you could be a businessman, you could be a, you know, you could be anything in whatever field that right, you are involved and engaged in. God knows about that subject. God knows about it. Okay? Look at um, this verse, Isaiah 48 and verse 17. Okay. Thus says the Lord your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God, 
who teaches you to profit, who leads you by the way you should go. You know, that's a promise, right? Um, when he's saying that I am the Lord who teaches you to profit. So he's saying, he's describing himself and he's saying, this is what I do. I teach you to prosper. I teach you to profit, to be successful. You know, in business terms, what is profit? And you say, okay, profit. This is a profitable business. Or this this month we got a profit. What does what does profit mean? It's a gain. Sorry? Gain. Gain. You're okay. You're increasing your uh, income or whatever. I'm sorry? You're increasing your uh, yeah, please go ahead. Uh... Pastor, you are increasing your uh, finances. Increase. Okay. Yeah, specifically when we say profit, profit is something that is left over after meeting all our expenses, right? All our overheads. Like uh, typically in a business, you will have overheads like, uh, you know, rent and salary and what are working, uh, you know, expenses, all that, bills to be paid, etc. After that, what is left over is the, is the profit. Okay. So the, what is God saying? You know, I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit, who, who teaches you how to come to that place. It's fascinating, right? Which means, how can you teach someone unless you know? Right? Only if you know something that you will you'll be able to teach. The Lord is saying, I will teach you to profit, to come to that place of meeting all your expenses and everything and having more than that. I'm the Lord who will teach you to profit, who leads you by the way you should go. Okay. So when we say profit, we can also say, okay, to be successful in life, right? to come to a place of thriving and flourishing, and to have success, and you know, like you rightly said, increase. Right. So the Lord is saying, I teach you to profit, which means there is a requirement from, from us or responsibility that we have in order to be taught, to be teachable. Right? So he's willing to teach. He's saying, I am the Lord, your God, who teaches you to profit, which means that I need to be teachable. I need to receive the teaching from him. And also it says that who leads you by the way you should go, which means I need to be someone who will follow. Right? It says, Psalm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd. I will not lack anything. Right? He leads me. Right? So that's something that he wants to do with his people. God wants to lead, which means we as his disciples, we need to be willing to follow. Okay, so that's something that we see, okay, as a responsibility, as my responsibility, okay, I cannot be passive, but I need to be teachable. Secondly, I need to be a person who is willing to follow. Because from his side, he's promising, he's saying, I will teach you. I will teach you, I'll bring you to this place. Are you willing to be? Taught. I will lead you. Are you willing to follow? Now that's the question, right? God will ask us, right? Let's look at one more verse. Uh, Isaiah 28. This is very interesting, right? Isaiah 28. Um, uh, Gertrude, I see your question about the assignment, right? About the quiz. Now, I also aunt, um, you know, saw your comment on the stream and um, I replied, your submission I've not received. Okay, all the others have got. Uh, I tried uh, uh, handing in pastor, but it's not going through. Many uh, times I tried. So all the required fields were filled in. I think there was only one required mandatory field, which was the name. Um, but apart from that, everything else was optional. So if you had problem with the submission, it could be because of that. Um, I'm not sure. I'll check again, pastor, but I think I filled everything. I'm and sorry? Uh, uh, I had for much before the time you scheduled, but it's not standing in. Mm, so, what was the difficulty? What did it say? Any, any? Uh... It just uh, doesn't uh, go. I mean, it doesn't accept. Doesn't say anything, but. Uh... Mm. Yes, uh, I really don't know about that. Um, but now, because, uh, 
um, now because the date is crossed, um, the quiz may not be accessible right now. It won't be able to. You won't be able to send anything. Um, um, but uh, I it, uh, before time passed, uh, three days before the time you yeah, have given, yeah, then like again it. on the last day also. Yeah. Before so ten o'clock, I tried so many times. Okay. Okay. So maybe after twelve, twelve noon, you can try once more. I'll make it accessible just for you. you can try. But, okay, pastor. Uh, yeah. Twelve noon today. Yeah. yeah, between two okay. twelve and one, I, I'll keep it uh, accessible. But uh, yeah, you, you try to check it out. Okay, thank you, Pastor. Pastor, Pastor, please. There is a feedback with uh, John's mic, so if um, you can be muted. Okay, it's not very clear. Maybe you can reduce the volume a bit. Sir. How's the oh. audio? How's it now? How's the audio? Is it okay? Check. Is it okay? I think somebody's mic is. Uh, let's see, your mic is on. Yeah, that of John. Maybe that's right. Okay. Um, okay. You know, your, your. Can you just uh, mute your mic? Bless. Ah, oh, yeah. Okay. How's it now? Better. 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 Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Let's uh, let's continue. Okay. So let's look at Isaiah twenty-eight verses twenty-three to twenty-nine. Okay. So this is what uh, God says. You know, give ear and hear my voice. Listen and hear my speech. Okay. Just look at verse twenty-four onwards. Does the plowman keep plowing all day to sow? Does he keep turning his soil and breaking the clods? When he has leveled its surface, does he not sow the black cumin and scatter the cumin, plant the wheat in rows, the barley in the appointed place, and the spelt in its place? Okay. So verse 24 talks about agriculture, about the farmer, and it talks about different kinds of crops and the way these are, these different kinds of crops are sown. Okay. Talks about cumin, how the seeds are scattered, and talks about the wheat and how it's planted in rows. Talks about the barley in its appointed place, etc. Right? Then verse 26, uh, verses, uh, sorry, verse, yeah, 24 and 25 talks about that. Then 26 says, For he instructs him in right judgment, his God teaches him. For the black come. Now, so verse 26 very clear it says that this knowledge and understanding. Uh, comes from God. Okay, then verse twenty-seven says, "For the it talks about the reaping and the processing of the crops which are grown." Okay, what does it say? For the black cumin is not threshed with the threshing sledge, nor is a cartwheel rolled over the cumins, but the black cumin is beaten out with the stick, and the cumin with the rod. Bread flour must be ground. Therefore, he does not thresh it forever, break it with his cartwheel, or Crush it with his horsemen. Verse 29. This also comes from the Lord of hosts, who is, who is wonderful in counsel and excellent in guidance. Okay, so something basic as farming. Okay, so it says that this comes from the Lord our God. This knowledge comes from the Lord our God. And says that he is wonderful in counsel. And excellent in guidance, right? So while we see God for matters of spiritual nature, right? like the Word of God and and faith and uh, you know and so on, when we look at this, we see that God knows everything. Like the Holy Spirit knows everything, and it's a privilege for Him to be indwelling us. Well, for us to have Him indwelling us, and it's a privilege for us to be led by Him counseled by him guided by him okay? and uh, and that's what we are learning right we are learning about him and we are learning how to be led by by the spirit of god right so one more verse daniel chapter 2 19 to 23 okay then the secret was revealed to daniel um just give me a minute yeah secret was revealed to daniel in a night vision 
So Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and light dwells with him. Verse 23, I thank you and praise you, O God of my fathers. You have given me wisdom and might and have now made known to me what we asked of you, for you have made known to us the king's demand. Okay, so what is the context there? The king has said, you know, I, I want to know. I want to know the meaning, right? The meaning of this, of the dream that I had. So, and they seek the Lord and they pray and, and this is what the Lord has revealed to Daniel. So Daniel is just expounding and he's saying, you know, this is who God is. Might, understanding, wisdom are with him. Right? And he says, you know, now they are mine because you have, or reveal that you have transfer that to me okay so what does that mean that means that for each one of us right we could be in ministry we could be working professionals we could be you know our 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 line of maybe work or profession vocation could be many different things right but we have one thing that is a privilege to be led by the spirit of god okay to be led by the spirit of god you know, not only in evangelism, in ministering to people, in, you know, in the prophetic, in the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and etc. Not only that, but in the work that we do. In finances. When it comes to, okay, Lord, what do I do with the money? How do I use it? How do I save it? How do I invest it? How do I spend it? Right? The Lord has the wisdom and the knowledge. So we should never limit God. When we say, no, I don't want to limit God, this is also another area where we can say, God, you teach me, you show me. Like there are, you know, um, especially, you know, uh, Christian businessmen and you know, people, there are so many testimonies of how they came out with innovations, meaning new products, right? Or thought of new discoveries and, and so on. And how the Lord actually revealed that to them. So, for us, why should we limit God, right? Be it ministry, be it the work that you're doing, why should we limit God? You know, we can, many times we think, okay, I, I need to struggle, I need to, you know, do this. Yes, we need to put in hard work, learn, gather knowledge, but the Lord will give us understanding. The Lord will give us wisdom, right? He can give us that wisdom and knowledge that cannot be, you know, accessed, in any other manner, right? Okay, so we have the privilege of receiving uh, of the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Okay, the next one that we see, which is again a principle um, for financial you know, prosperity, is this, that God gives us prophetic word. You know, many times when he leads us, and even this wisdom and knowledge that he gives us, he releases it through a prophetic word. Now, what is prophecy? Yeah. What is prophecy? Bhavishyavani. Correct, no? What is it? God is speaking to man through man. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, just can you repeat that, please? God is speaking to man through God is man. Speaking to man through man. Right? That's a very simple and a very clear, I think, definition. It is it involves so many things. Right? It could be about the past, it could be about the present, it could be about the future, but basically it's God speaking, conveying something to man right? through another person. So it could be through a group, like what, like what we see, there were people who laid hands on Timothy and prophesied and prayed, and like we see Paul and Silas and um, how people actually got gathered together and, uh, you know, Paul and Barnabas, sorry, uh, in the church in Antioch, they prayed and they sent them you know, uh, on a missionary journey. So it could be uh, one person or it could be a group, but that's how it is, like right? a prophetic word. Okay. So Second Chronicles 20, 20, uh, it, it's, this is about King Jehoshaphat. Now there was an army coming and so Jehoshaphat seeks God 
what she what should he do with it and this is the this is what he uh, you know he receives right this is the instruction um second chronicles 20 and verse 20 okay so they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. and as they went out jehoshaphat stood and said hear me o judah and you inhabitants of jerusalem believe in the lord your god and you shall be established believe his prophets and you shall prosper Okay, so a true, authentic word of prophecy okay, that comes from him and that is conveyed in humility and conveyed uh, clearly. Right? When, the, when we receive it, it is to prosper us. It is to bless us right? because it's coming from God. It, and so you know, you'll be studying about the prophetic um, and the apostolic and so on, but uh, in detail, the whole semester, so that will be very exciting. But we see that you know the prophetic word, it could have a you know a futuristic direction, right? It would be about the future, right? Or it could be something that will just edify. Okay, if you look at one Corinthians fourteen, um, just to you know give us some understanding what um, you know what what a prophetic word does. Okay? One Corinthians. Um, Chapter 14. Okay, so verse 3. Okay, he who prophes prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. Okay, a prophetic word carries that. Edification. What is edification? Any other translation is there? Sorry? Building up. Okay. Edification. So if, you know, when you say you look at a building, it's called a you know another word is edifice or a structure that is built up. Okay, so edification. So it's also it also means spiritual constructive spiritual progress. So it brings builds up something in us. Why? Because it's God's word. Right? It is God's word that is coming to man through man. So um, it is timely. It is knowledge that we don't have any idea of, but then here is this information, right? So prophetic work brings edification. What is exhortation? It is encouragement, right? It exhorts, encourages us. And the third one is it brings comfort. Edification, exhortation, comfort, okay? Yes, the prophetic word can correct us. The prophetic word can be directional, but this is what it does, right? So here we see Second Chronicles twenty twenty, where Jehoshaphat says, "You know, believe his prophets, and you shall prosper." Right? Which means that a prophetic word, which is given the right manner, uh, accurately, it builds up people. Right? And in this very area of, uh, you know, God speaking to us, He will use the human, uh, other human beings, other disciples, and He will speak to us. Okay. Let's look at one more verse. Ezra 6 and verse 14, it says, So the elders of the Jews built, so they're talking about the temple, and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo. And they built and finished it according to the commandment of the God of Israel, according to the command of Cyrus, Darius, and Artaxerxes, king of Persia. So it says here, uh, you know, if you look at the first part of it, they prospered through the prophesying. They prospered through the prophesying, which means some good happened to them, right? Uh, they were benefited because of the prophesying. Who are those people? It names them as uh, Zechariah and also uh, Haggai. So they, God used them to prophesy. God used them to bring his word, right? Speak his word, maybe timely, maybe some instructions, but they prospered through that prophesying. Okay, so which means that the prophetic, uh, the prophetic gifting and the prophetic word is for us today. It is to bless the church, or uh, which means every individual believer, right? Um, just want to share one one other scripture, which is in First Thessalonians chapter five. Okay? Um, First Thessalonians chapter five, and uh, it says in verse nineteen and verse twenty. Do not quench the spirit, right? Do not quench the spirit. So quench is, the picture that we have is putting out a fire. Okay, so Holy Spirit is doing something, uh, the fire is burning, but as a human being, I can actually put out that fire. Okay, First Thessalonians 
chapter 5, verse 19. Okay, do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Okay, this is for the New Testament church. Okay, so uh, as much as we see in the Old Testament, you know, in these scriptures that we saw, um, you know, believe the prophets and you will prosper and so on. You know, if you're saying, okay, that is Old Testament, now we are in the New Testament, but this is what we see as an instruction for the New Testament believer. Do not despise prophecies. So why would one despise prophecy? You know, this is slightly out of topic, but why would one despise a prophet's prophecy? Sorry? Negligence or arrogance that people don't want to be corrected. Maybe it's ignorance. 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 And then and then, you know, like you said, arrogance or pride. You know, so I'm thinking like, okay, who's this person to talk to like this? You know? So it could be that. It could be ignorance of the, the the gifting itself, right? So that's why Paul writes 1 Corinthians 12, the verse one, he says, Beloved, you know, brethren, I don't want you to be ignorant of the spiritual gifts. Yes, it could be it could be because of ignorance. And also, um, and also, it could be because of misuse or abuse, right? See, if you if you look at the prophetic gift, Paul writes to the church in Corinth, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, 14. He's talking about all the gifts, but he's actually saying how it should be used, right? Which means it can be misused. There's a right way of using the gift. There's a wrong way of using the gift, right? So if people are hurt by a wrong way of, of a misuse of the gift. You know, I maybe I use the gift in order to control. I use the gift in order to get something out of people. Right? So then what do I what do people say? I don't want anything to do with this. I don't want this property. Right? Because it is uh, I've just received hurt. Right? People have just used me, manipulated me. So I don't want anything to do with these gifts, especially property. So it is possible that one can end up despising prophecy. So that's why you know uh, God is very clear in His instructions. You know, do not quench the Holy Spirit, which means don't stop the work of the Holy Spirit, and do not despise prophecies. Look at the next verse. What does it say? Test all things, right? Test all things. Hold fast what is good. So, which means we have been given that instruction. You know, this is this is what it is. When it comes to the prophetic word, you need to test it. Okay? Somebody says, okay. You know, God is calling you to go to this place tomorrow. Test it. And how would you test it? You know, is it really genuine? Is it the word of God? Um, is there a witness in my spirit? Is there a peace within? Is there a confirmation by two or three other witnesses? So many other ways, right? Where we can test the word of God. You know, is it against the nature and character of God? Is it in line with this nature and character? And so on. So test the word of God. Yeah. Is it okay if you can at times uh, when you get a prophecy and then uh, you uh, uh, kind of you know you pray to God to ask for another confirmation or absolutely yeah so it's not like doubting what is being told it's not doubt it's it's uh, you know in the sense you maybe you uh, you know there is no see we are, we are spirit soul and body maybe in our soul in our thinking we're not uh, you know we're not sure right it's it's something which is I mean, sometimes the prophetic word can be really fantastic and out of, you know, something that we are used to. So it's absolutely okay. And you are, you know, we are his children. He's our father and he's our shepherd. So it's absolutely okay to ask for confirmation and say, Lord, you know, it's a big thing, big step. You know, it's a very significant move. Um, you know, maybe it's something to do with a big decision about, uh, let's say, a client, an order, a big investment. Um, maybe relocation, so many things, right? And here comes the prophetic word, and yeah, it's absolutely okay. And we need to, it's scriptural to test. So we can, we need to do that. So it's saying test all things, hold fast to what is good. Okay, what does that mean? Hold fast to what is good. Hold fast to what is good. What is hold fast? Holding fast it means you hold tight, get a good grip. And what do you get a good grip on? On to what is good. So what does that mean? What is unsaid in this? 
So this is what is stated very obviously. Hold fast to what is good. Okay, Get a good grip on what is good. And what is it regarding? It's regarding the prophecy. It's regarding a prophecy. So don't despise prophecies. Test all things. Hold fast to what is good. So you've tested it. You're holding fast to what is good in that word or the prophetic word that you receive. But what it also means is do not hold fast to what is not good. Yes or no? Yeah. So don't 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 hold fast to what is not good. Which means there could be elements which are fleshly. Okay. There could be elements which are maybe of just a human nature, fleshly, and not of the spirit. So that is why the instruction tests all things. Hold fast to what is good. Don't hold fast or just discard what is not good. And it's so important, you know, when we're saying, okay, I'm receiving the prophetic instruction, God has actually placed it so that we can prosper, so that we can be edified, encouraged, comforted, and we can be prospered. You know? But we need to, this is the instruction that is there. Test all things, hold fast to what is good, receive what is good. And we, as you're testing, and you see that hey, there are certain elements which, which are not from God. I know for a fact this is not from God. right? And God is actually witnessing to my heart that it is not from Him. Just leave it. right? If you're not sure, just leave it or put it aside. And you go, hold fast to what is good, what you know to be true, what you know for sure, this is God speaking, and go with this. But do not despise prophecies. Do not quench the Holy Spirit. So it's a journey that we're talking about when we say, I want to be led by the Spirit of God. Okay, So um, God leads us um, and to prosper us through the prophetic as well. Okay, any questions? Anything? Pastor, just a general observation. Uh, globally, when you actually, uh, you know, it's my observation. It's globally, when you uh, see, it's like, you know, you see the Jewish being more prosperous and, you know, reaching great heights mm. on a comparative scale. So your thoughts on it? I don't know. My opinion is probably they had a head start. <laughs> Chosen people. And, and, and it's a known fact that, uh, you know, uh, there are more Nobel Prize winners among the Jewish community and so on. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Probably it's that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, I mean, but right now, you know, we see that all of us, you know, we are the, the body of Christ. We have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. So there's no reason why we should not... Uh, you know, be led by God into these places of um, increase and success and so on. Right? Okay. A any other um, any other doubts or questions? Uh, okay. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. You know, which is uh, you know, which might seem a little you know, we might it might seem a little contrary or you know. Something very different from okay, being led by the spirit. Okay, it says that the Bible is very practical. It says, get wisdom, get knowledge, get understanding. Okay, which means you do your bit in order to learn, in order to get wisdom, in order to get knowledge, in order to learn, get understanding. Okay, and the whole book of Proverbs is full of instructions like that. Right, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and understanding, and so on. So it says here. Uh, let's look at a few verses. Okay, um, you can actually read Proverbs one, uh, Proverbs eight, the whole thing about wisdom. Okay, one to twenty-one. Proverbs eleven and verse fourteen says, uh, "Where there is no counsel, the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors there is safety." Okay, so counsel, wisdom, right? Timely counsel. What is what is counsel? Which means advice. Simple words. Advice. Advice on various matters. Could be advice on okay, what should I do next? Uh, where should I go? You know, so many things, right? So the Bible is talking that where there is no counsel, where there is no advice, the people uh, fall. But in the multitude of counselors or advisors, there is safety. Okay, so which means that, you know, advice which is authentic, real, coming from a place of humility to bless people, you know, there is safety, right? 
it, but if in the lack of that, there is, um, you know, people fall. Okay, another scripture, uh, Proverbs 12, verse 15, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he who heeds counsel or listens to counsel is wise. Okay, uh, Proverbs 15 and verse 22, without counsel, plans go awry, but in the multitude of counselors, they are established. Okay, um, okay so these are all about counsel or advice. Okay, uh, advice from learning, advice from experience, advice, godly advice. So here it's not really, it doesn't say, okay, what category it is, but it, it is because of learning and experience, one is advising another person, okay? Proverbs 19 verse 27 says, cease listening to instruction, my son, and you will stray from the words of knowledge. Okay, what's an instruction? I'm sorry? Uh, guideline, guidelines. Guidelines. To follow. Yeah, so when, whenever you get a product, you know, you buy a phone, you get an instruction manual. No, most of us never read it, right? Uh, we don't read it because, you know, we, we okay, we, I know how it works. I switch on and then it just leads us, guides us. But the instruction manual has uh, certain functions, right? Uh, like, for example, yesterday, I was, uh, yeah, I think, uh, Nadal, your mic is, um, needs to be muted. Brad? Sorry. Okay, I've done. I've got done it. Okay, so uh, yesterday, you know, I was just trying to clean the the washing machine. So every now and then we need to do that. So I'd forgotten how to set it for that cleaning. It has a cleaning mode, right? So so I had to get back. You know, I was searching for the manual. I had kept it somewhere, and I took it and saw, and then there was this thing. Okay, this is how you do it. It was a very simple thing, but it was there in the instruction manual, right? So here it talks about instruction, how to do things. What should you do? What are the steps involved? That is an instruction. Okay, instruction, it, it could be on anything, right? It says here, cease listening to instruction and you will stray from the words of knowledge. You will go away from the word of knowledge. So God, our God instructs us. He instructs us in good things. He tells us, he shows us, okay, these are the steps that you need to do, right? So for us to get wisdom, to get knowledge, and to get understanding is not wrong, okay? So we might think, okay, you know, what if that is worldly? We have to use our discernment. When we say worldly wisdom, what does it mean? It means that that's something which is not in line with the Spirit of God, right? Worldly wisdom, something that is, you know, something that inflates the pride of man. You know, it's it's not something that that is humble, right? Uh, or, or you know, comes from from God. You know, it's worldly in nature, which means which leads man away from God. Okay, so we need to be discerning. Right? Worldly wisdom does that, right? Okay, so. In all, you know, for us to be led by God, for us to, you know, prosper in the things of God, it is okay to learn. It is okay to get understanding. It is okay to be educated. Right? And, uh, and right now, if you're thinking about, you know, various things, right, uh, about, about money, about uh, various topics, now it's all available, right? It's available. On the internet, it's available on various free courses also, right? Suppose it's a language skill. Suppose it's something to do with, uh, you know, our knowledge about a place. It's all available. Okay, so, um, so here's the instruction, you know, that we will get learning, that we will get knowledge, that we will get wisdom. So we don't have to be against that, right? Um, many times people don't read the newspaper. Right. Why? It is worldly. But then, you know, it's, it's information about the world that God has created. Right? Yes, it's got a lot of bad news, a lot of negative things. You open the paper, uh, this, is, this person was killed, you know, bomb blast here, this accident. It's got a lot of things. But then there is information about what is actually happening around us. Right? It's the world that God has created. And there's, you know, so 
we don't have to distance ourselves from learning we don't have to you know distance ourselves from understanding things and gathering information it's not you know it, that's not what the bible says right so we should be people who want to learn we should be curious about things and uh, and yes we need to use discernment what is discernment <clears throat> yeah so understanding of what is right and what is wrong and and of course we have the holy spirit you know who is the spirit of discernment he he teaches us shows us right in all our gathering of information gathering of knowledge and gathering of wisdom he shows us okay something that is not fruitful not beneficial for us okay okay so we'll stop here uh, any questions any further Any questions? No. Okay. Okay. I have. Uh, I think Anusha's comment. Um, see, sometimes when you submit the quizzes, um, maybe you don't get a confirmation, but you would have got the response, right? That your quiz has been submitted. You would have got that response, but maybe in the classwork section. It's still showing as um, thing. I'm, I don't know for whatever reason, but um, yeah. But for most folks, I've got the uh, the results. I've you know, got your submissions, so no problem. Um, okay, we'll stop here. Yeah. Thank you. God bless. We'll meet in the next class.